and we are back on air with Madam Ford from Ford Language, Language Institute. Institute. Welcome back, ma'am. I had a blast listening and watching your podcast with Sergey. Um, as a fresh of the boat American, I spent a lot of time polishing my accent. I do know that a lot of people who are coming to the States or even those who are coming to Hollywood, they try to polish their accent. Uh, they could be from England, they could be from Spain, mm -hmm. from uh, Eastern Europe, even from New York or the yes. South. Regional, we call those regional accents. Right. And um, when I found out about your, about your program, that's, uh, I wish I knew about it <laughs> sooner, <laughs> to be honest with you. I've been working on my personal accent for quite a bit of time. And uh, I still sometimes hear that people ask me, are you from Eastern Europe? Are you from, uh, uh, you know, they're trying to guess. But how did you come up with this specific niche to reduce the accent of an individual? Um, it started many, many years ago. As a matter of fact, uh, about 40 years ago. I said okay. 30, I think it's 40 years ago. Um, 30, 40, it's it, already... It was developed, uh, we developed with a group of uh, linguists, right. speech pathologists. Uh, there, nothing had been done. We searched all over worldwide. There was nothing about what in the world do you do that to help people. Yeah. Uh, it took us uh, almost two years of research and development and uh, finally um, arrived at the solution that seemed to be working. We had to take uh, quite a number of uh, adults we started with the Unisys uh, Corporation, and we took them and we used them as models. Uh, and we created, the first thing we created was a profile. Right. We had to find out what is it about the speech that's not working. And we created a um, sort of a table. And as, the sp as we gave words to the individual right. to speak them, we were listening very carefully. And we were finding that there were specific vowels Right. Uh, that they were having trouble with. And then we noticed that there were the consonants they were having trouble with. Uh, then we noticed that they were having stress with some of the patterns that were difficult. So then from that, <clears throat> we developed exercises and lessons to work with those particular problems. Right. So we ended up with a, a profile. So we knew exactly what to do with that person. And of course, when we started, it was just with individuals. Right. So it was, a, uh, it was a linguist or a speech pathologist speaking directly with one individual. And then as the progression, we were able to do that. Then we began to, gee, when we first did the first program, it was all audio cassettes, you can imagine, 40 right. years ago. And then the progression was to, what was next after that? Uh, CD-ROMs, I think, came. Right. Uh, and then, of course, the cell phone came, as you can imagine. And so we've just continued to adapt uh, right. as the, the technology has advanced to the point now where um, you, you don't need an instructor to be there. The instructor is the app. Right. Okay. Uh, and the beautiful part about the, the app is that it's got both the recording, uh, it's got the listening aspect, it's got the comparison app set. So you've always got the, the, um, the recorded sound of the, national, uh, the, the natural speaker, and then you've got the um, the recorded sound of the individual, right? And they're they're constantly rocking back and forth to see if they're getting they're getting closer and closer and closer to imitating that sound, right? Um, and the good news is that once you have become uh, clear, clearly spoken with the vowels and the consonants, you it doesn't go away. You've got it. You've reached it. It's right. going to stay with you. And then the natural progression is to say, well, if I'm speaking clearly, what's the next step? Well, that would be to sp speaking fluently. Right. And I will tell you, though, that there are a, a large number of individuals from other countries that are actually speaking English fairly fluently. Right. But the problem is that they're still having difficulty speaking clearly. Right. And that's the number one issue today. Uh, and as I was explaining to Sergey, the most beautiful thing about this program is that if you're really willing to work it and become a clearly spoken, become um, uh, fluent, and become an advanced American English speaker, the opportunities outweigh any natural citizen. Exactly. So it's really a phenomenal opportunity for people that have come to this country. 
Right. Um, I have a question. You mentioned that you started working with uh, uh, pathologists. Yes. Do you and your team consider an accent as a pathology or how does that Well, it is, work? It is interesting. Um, that's why we eliminated the term pathology right away because okay. there's nothing about pathology. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're really, really talking basic English. Um, and it's, the term really is reduction. It's accent reduction. Um, and the only, it's just, it, it, the term was in the beginning, the, the nomenclature was to say that you are a speech pathologist because right. they worked in the hospitals and they were working with pathology. Right. But the, the today, it's a totally different thing in terms of uh, people like to refer to themselves as linguists. The right, far. yeah. The world is too sensitive. Yeah. Um, I have another question. You know when the little baby moves to a different language environment, baby catches that accent easily versus a, an adult. Why and how does that work? Well, if you're an adult, mm -hmm. you've already inculcated your own language. Basically speaking, you're rusty. Oh, wait, okay, yes, all right. <clears throat> um, everyone knows that, that children do everything faster and better than adults. I mean, they're just like little sponges. Right. Um, so, so they will not have an accent problem whatsoever. So, and, and our program doesn't really uh, address anything with children. Okay. Uh, we would, we, the earliest we would start would be with uh, children that are in perhaps junior, well, I'd say probably high school might be better, okay. and certainly in colleges, because we're, we're only interested in really accent reduction. We're only interested in someone who's currently been speaking their own native language. Right. And therefore, are having difficulty speaking English clearly right. or fluently. So our audience always has been either the high schools, the junior colleges, the universities, and then of course you move into business and to acting. As you mentioned, um, there are many, many actors. You've seen how easily they, they can pick up other languages and, and use the correct accent. That's because they have a teaching, they have an accent coach, is what a they call it. A few of them, yeah. Uh, when we <clears throat> talk about accent reduction, um, do you have certain levels or is it just like a general program? Um, I don't think I really, I don't think about putting them in levels. Um, basically, you just look at it as when you're listening to someone speaking, if they're speaking clearly, then the other thing you're listening to is whether they're fluent. Right. And so um, that's the way I do it. I'm, I just look at levels, mm -hmm. usually clearly first, then fluently, then naturally. Okay. Those are the three, okay. the three elements. Elements. Right. Right. When we talk about um, American accent, um, which one is it? Is it the California Valley? Is it Chicago? Is it New York? Is it um, yes. Florida? Texas? I get, I get asked that a lot. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, you know, we call those regional accents. Right, Region, but Region. which one is the American I will accent? tell you that uh, it would be, this would be more of a California, might even go as, yeah, I would say we're talking very much the uh, West Coast. The West Coast. Yeah. Okay. Were the valley in it? Mm, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny one, though. I love it. Yes, yes. Um, how do you, um, how do you build a program to, to, um, to break this first barrier? in a person who is trying to polish the accent. Okay. Obviously, you, you've worked with a lot of people all around the world. Uh, thank you for teaching the nurses. Uh, the basics. doctors. Right. Executives. You know, when, I, why, when, I, when I heard you told Sergey about the nurses in China, I was in China for some time for filming. And, um, you know, as athlete, we have, as, you know, as a former athlete, I have to take my blood test to check mm -hmm. all all the things, and um, I had to draw my blood, and the nurse was fishing with a needle, and she's uh, telling me that... Um, it's a Chinese nurse. Right. Uh, something is wrong, and I can't understand, but luckily I speak Chinese, so uh, explain to me, and like, what's going on? You, you're not smiling, like you're fishing. So your help will definitely be helpful to... Uh, Did you notice how young the nurses are? Oh, yeah. 
I, I was just absolutely shocked when I saw. I was asked to go uh, to China. In fact, I was. I had my program uh, in Southern California at one of the uh, junior colleges. Right. And uh, the professor approached me, uh, who happened to be Chinese, and said, would I consider going to China? Because they had a, a, a huge problem. They couldn't get the Chinese nurses to pass that test of spoken English. Right. And would my program help them with it? And I said, oh, absolutely. So I thought he was just going to take the program. He goes, no, we want to take you. <laughs> so I ended up spending two years wow. in, in, in China. And I was which, shocked at which how. Part? Uh, well, actually, I was in. Uh, let's see, Shanghai basically is where okay. I was. Uh, but I ended up f going way more to the to the west and in oh. the south. Okay. And I was the only Caucasian there for many Lucky. many months. Back to your trip to China. Which places did you visit? And you've been there for two years. I was years. there for two years. Of course, it was, uh, that was in 1980, so you'll have to forgive me if I forget some of That's it. That's okay. But uh, just small uh, areas in the, in the western portion. And as I was starting to tell you, the, the nurses looked to me like they were like 16, 17, 18 years old. I mean, they were very, very, very right. young. Um, and um, we had amazing success with them. They were like the sponges. I mean, they really, it was so important to be able to leave the country for right. their country and come to the United States. Uh, and then as I explained to Sergey, um, that was so successful over there that I was asked to go to Taiwan. Uh, and that was also uh, very, very successful. Um, it's, 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 just, it's just really amazing to, to see how ready these individuals are in different countries to be able to access the language and be more successful. When I went to the Philippines, I actually put a, a computer lab up because at that time I didn't have an app. I just had it as a, a program on the computer. Right. Uh, and so I had about maybe six little computers and I was amazed at how many hours they spent getting to my office. I mean, they would walk for a while, they would ride a, a horse for a while, they would maybe, the, the, I mean, it was just amazing what they would do to get to my office. And then I, maybe 12 would come, but I only had four machines. And they would be there all day because they would refuse to get off because they were so, it was so important to their families right. because uh, the families looked to them to make the money. Right. And they had to pass that test of spoken English and it was over the phone. Can you imagine how difficult it is to pass a verbal test on the telephone, very, very difficult for them. But yeah. they did indeed pass with my program. So it was, a, it was a really remarkable thing to bring them to the United States. So. Well, it was beautiful that you helped so many yes. people, so many careers. Yes. Back to the California accent. You know, in California, people um, quite often, they would swallow sounds, they would put together two words, they would um, change T's with D's. Uh, do you help your students um, to fix these issues, I would say, minor issues, or it's okay? Well, it depends on whether they want to change. Do we have an option? Let's oh, put it absolutely. This way. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the, the bottom line is individuals just need to be understood. That, that's critical. Right. Um, so, you can, you can bring any accent you want, um, but you, if you are, as I said, it's a California accent, but I will tell you it's, it moves a little bit almost to the Midwest. So it's okay. a combination, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so I refer to those as regional accents. And then do people want to change regional accents? Um, they want to change them if they have certain things that they're doing. Right. If it's working for them where they are, they're fine. Why do a lot of people want to change because they're always asked, where are you from? Mm. And they go, I'd like to just be able to be, you know, not ask that question anymore. Okay. So if you are speaking with a regional accent, and the most common one people talk about maybe New York or maybe down south. Right. Uh, that's so obviously different. Right. Um, especially if you're an actor, you, you have to be able to probably mimic a number of different accents. Very true. Um, but, you know, 
my concern more is with individuals that want to have the American accent so that they're more accepted in the community, so they feel more a part of the community, so they're more effective at their jobs. Um, it, it, that's the miracle. Right. Uh, when, I, when I watch individuals being interviewed and I see how they're struggling in an interview and I, know that I just know they're not going to get a job as a result of that, uh, that's the person I want to help. Right. I don't want that to be a problem for them. Right. I want someone to have the confidence after they finish my program that they're going to walk in with tremendous confidence in that interview because I want them to know that not only are they going to get that interview more than likely as long as they have the skill, right. okay, um, but they're walking in there and they're going to be a number of Native Americans that are applying for that same position. Right. They are now multilingual. That American sitting right there is monolingual. Right. And so who's going to get the job? Okay. Exactly. Uh, I'm looking at how I can help uh, all the different companies that are struggling with the, I mean, every company, and by correct today, basically has customer service. They have to have customer service. Yeah. And that is the number one complaint of Americans, calling an 800 number and not being able to understand. A single it's, word. It's, <laughs> and it's incredible frustration because you want to. You want to desperately understand. Yeah. And look at the company. Look at the, what this does to their bottom line. When they, they're trying to hire people, and they usually hire a lot of people to do their customer service. Right. Uh, and to be able to have them be able to speak clearly, even more importantly than fluently, but to speak clearly. Well, here's where this program can help tremendously. Right. It helps their bottom line. It helps the number of people that they can hire. Right. Um, it's, it's just it's a good feeling to be able to help them. Very true. Um, you know, um, I, I always try to stay positive, And when I call customer service, um, I'm a multilingual person, so I guess it's okay for me to joke that I, I love hearing Indian accent. When I don't get a single word, at least it's funny. And when I hear um, uh, South American accent, Hispanic accent, whether it's Argentinian or Mexican, they're all a little bit different. Yeah. You just have to start dancing <laughs> you know, and then just take it easy. Um, back to the program. Uh, how does it work? If, let's say, I would download it to my, for myself right now, uh, what am I going to start with? Okay, um, when you go to the program, it's, it'll, it, uh, it'll come up and it'll say um, the American Accent Program, and, uh, and basically it's to acquire the American accent, and there are three parts to it. Okay. Okay, the first part is speaking clearly. Okay. The second part is speaking fluently. Right. And the last part is speaking naturally. Okay. So, and I have an, exclaim, uh, an exclaimer at the very beginning saying, because a lot of people come to my program, like yourself, or like Sergey, uh, and they want to immediately jump to speaking fluently or speaking naturally. And I say, you must, you must start with speaking clearly. And you may be speaking clearly, but let's just really be sure you are. Right. And so you go into the program, and immediately I have you go to the 14 vowel sounds. Okay, and I make you record your voice. Right. Okay, compare your voice to the native, uh, and then make a distinction whether your voice is matching. If it's not matching, you the program drops you down immediately for that sound into the lesson. Okay. To learn to speak it correctly. Okay. And then it'll drop you down into all of the practice exercises to reinforce that you're doing it correctly. Right. But then I don't let you off there. Then I make you go back to that sound re-record that sound, then listen again to the native sound. Now do you match? If you don't match, down you go again. Let's figure out where, where it was. You need more practice, okay? But if you do get that sound correctly, then you just take a little box and you check off. And the idea is in the end, you have 14 check marks on right. the vowel sounds. Those are now perfect. Now you go to the 24 consonant sounds and you do the same thing. When you have mastered the 14 vowel sounds and you have mastered the 24 consonant sounds, right. you are speaking clearly. Right. Then you're ready to move on to speaking fluently. Okay. Now, what do you have to master? Well, we have eight intonation patterns. Okay. And as I explained to Sergey, when I was in the Philippines, I was working with some student nurses. Right. And uh, one of the gals raised her hand and said, 
what category is that? And I said, I'm sorry, what did you say? She said, what category? And I said, I'm sorry, would you write that on the board for me? And she went up and she clearly wrote out category. Right. Okay? That's a stress pattern. Right. Okay? So we have eight stress patterns, and they become quite complicated. They start out easy, but we have some like application. Right. Okay? So when you go into the program, it's all designed to show you graphically where you make the stress. Okay? So. And the third level? Third level is <clears throat> speaking naturally. To speak naturally, you have to have mastered speaking clearly, right. speaking fluently. Right. So what I do is every, every exercise uh, and uh, every lesson usually has a paragraph explaining mm -hmm. you know, how you manufacture the sound. How do you make this sound? Right. So now when you're going to speak naturally, I'm, con I'm concerned about how are you speaking conversationally? When we have to have running speech, right. how well are you doing? Right. It's one thing to use single words, maybe two or three words together, but how do you do with an entire paragraph? Right. Okay, that's what's called speaking naturally. Mm -hmm. So the good news is all those paragraphs, all those instructions are all recorded. So now you go back and you listen to an entire paragraph. Now you record that entire paragraph. And then you go back and you compare the two and see how well you're doing. When you have mastered all those paragraphs, you now are truly speaking with a natural American accent. Right. Listening to your story, um, I recalled there was a little comedic video made by um, a comedic team, right? And they had two actors from Ireland uh, in an elevator in New York <laughs> with a voice recognition system. Okay. And the voice recognition system would not recognize their they're actually Command 11. <laughs> so uh, it's <laughs> indeed, it is important. And it sounds way more fun than, I, than the method that I used. I had to use my blanket, a little lighter, and the book, and just keep reading. Really? Uh, I, I've, I, I've been going up with two sisters, and if I'd bother them, you know, there was a shoe <laughs> <laughs> flying into my head, so I had to be you know, careful. Um, back to your story. You've worked in Asia, you've worked in uh, Europe. Um, many different countries, many different cultures. Which accent do you find the most um, entertaining for yourself to work with, to hear? And which one is the harshest one? I think the harshest would be the Indian. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe even also the, uh, the Arabic. Um, I like uh, accents. I like uh, Norwegian. Okay. Swedish, Finland. What about Italian? Um, a little, a little flair for me. <laughs> okay. uh, but then I'm, I have to say I'm, I'm Swedish, so you know, I'm, I have a natural uh, inclination love to, to to love the Sweden. When I was uh, a young girl in, in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, which as you know is that that's everybody's from Sweden, Minnesota. Uh, my grandmother uh, used to say a, a Swedish prayer. Uh, to us in the uh, in the evening, right? And so uh, I grew up to really love to hear the the natural born in Claire, Saint to me to live in air. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much, Madam well, Ford, you. for coming today, for sharing with us, with our audience, about the program. I will definitely try it out on myself. Please. Uh, I and think I, it's. I, Look forward to hearing. It's extremely your useful yes, uh, thank for you. me. I think it's it's. Um, it's very useful for our folks in Hollywood, especially for those who are fresh. Mm -hmm. A lot of new people came after yes. the pandemic. Um, and for them, it's not just you know buying some groceries, it's right. their livelihood. So right. I'm sure that they will uh, definitely take advantage of this I beautiful think. chance. It's way better than the blanket and the shoe. Yes, your, I think so. <laughs> your sister's shoe. Uh, thanks so much. Thank we'll you. look forward to having you again. Thank um, you. I think that we'll try it out with Sergey, and, and then uh, the next time you'll be able to see if we have a bit of improvement. Yes, we're going to tackle Sergey and get him on the program. Yep, yeah, we'll do it together. <laughs> After okay. the work at the office is done at the midnight, okay. we'll, we'll be practicing. <laughs> so if there are news reports of two crazy guys it, practicing an accent, that's us. I love it, I love it. You're both tremendous gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am, and we'll, we hope okay. to see you soon. Thank you.